out of this world, really. That's the only way to describe it. But like I said, these dunes were deposited some 180 million years ago. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we are kayaking the Colorado River. We are just outside of Page, Arizona, right below Glen Canyon Dam. We just got dropped off by our outfitter and the plan is to paddle about 17 miles back down to Lee's Ferry. Along the way, we're hoping that we can find a good spot to camp at, but it is just absolutely gorgeous country out here. It's kind of hard to talk with all of this around me, so I'll just um, get to paddling and let the canyon do the talking. All right, we didn't make it very far, but we just stopped off this little beach here and our outfitter told us that there was some petroglyphs up here, so we're gonna go check them out. So we've been paddling for about three hours now and we decided to go ahead and stop and make camp. We're at Nine Mile Campground right here. And this campground is right underneath Horseshoe Bend. And we have a pretty incredible spot. Check this out. You can just barely make out the people that are at the overlook at the top. Camp's all set up. Now I'm just dying to get in this water.
Well, after my swim, I thought I'd go and do a little bit of exploring and get across this absolutely gorgeous slot canyon. I had no idea that this was here, so this is really cool to see. So this area is actually a really good place to stop and talk about the geology a little bit. This area of the Colorado River right below Glen Canyon Dam is considered sort of the start of the Grand Canyon. And as impressive as this canyon is, you might be wondering why this area isn't as wide as the Grand Canyon further downstream. And the answer to that question has to do with this concept called differential erosion. Not all rocks are made equally, and some are harder or softer than others. Downstream of here, where the canyon is wider, there are all types of rocks. Uh, sandstone, limestone, uh, igneous rocks, metamorphic rocks, and importantly, there's lots of shale. Shale is a pretty soft rock that will erode easily, whereas limestone or sandstone are what geologists call cliff-forming rocks. So they are much more resistant to erosion than a shale or a mudstone. So as the shale gets worn away, the limestone or sandstone loses its foundation and eventually the whole structure will collapse. And as a result, the canyon gets a little bit wider. But if you look around in this section of the canyon, there are no shales. Instead, the walls are made up almost entirely of quartz sandstone, which is incredibly hard and resistant. So while the river itself does a pretty good job of cutting downwards into the rock, the cliff faces are much more resistant to rain and water, and as a result, this area is much more steeper walled than further downstream where the canyon is wider. So since we're on the subject, this is actually a really famous sandstone called the Navajo sandstone. And the Navajo sandstone is really prolific in the southwest. It can be found in a variety of different places. Zion National Park, uh, Canyonlands National Park. If you've ever hiked Angel's Landing in Zion, then you'd be standing right on top of this stuff. The Navajo sandstone is really famous for its red colors, but what really excites geologists are the structures that are preserved inside the rock. The sand that makes up this rock was deposited about 180 million years ago during the Jurassic period. And during that time, this part of the world was much drier than it is today. Across much of what is today the Southwest, there existed a vast dune field. And the remnants of the sand dunes are preserved in this rock behind me. Hopefully you might be able to make out these strange diagonal patterns in the rock. These are called cross beds and they form as a result of water or air movement. In this case, these cross beds are aeolian or windborne. So in other words, we're looking at a cross-section view of a sand dune. So the cross bed itself represents the leeward side of the dune or the side that's opposite of the wind. So in this particular case for the outcrop behind me, the wind would have been moving from this direction and across the screen that way. However, what's really cool is that if you look about maybe 40 feet up, you can see where the wind direction actually switches and the cross beds are moving in a different orientation. But like I said, these dunes were deposited some 180 million years ago during the Jurassic period. And whenever we were living in Colorado, we lived um, really close to the Morrison Formation, which is another Jurassic age rock. And this is kind of cheesy to say, but it's really cool to be back in a location with uh, Jurassic age rocks. Um, kind of feels almost a little nostalgic in a way. <laughs> All right, I should probably head back down to camp because I've been up here for a while and Savannah's probably worried. <laughs>
is the next morning. It's about uh, eight o'clock. We started paddling at around seven. Wanted to get an early start so we can enjoy the river with as little boat traffic as possible. And also we need to get back to the ferry where we started at a somewhat decent time because we have to drive to the Grand Canyon today. But we're just taking it all in right now. And man, just after every single meander, the canyon just gets better and better. And yeah, I'm just at a loss for words. I've been wanting to do something like this for a really long time and I'm just absolutely thrilled that we've finally been able to do it. I mean, it's just incredible. Real quick, I wanted to share these cross beds right here. So like I said, these are ancient dunes and it's just so cool that you can pretty much just reach out and touch them. said it like a hundred times already, but this is just unbelievable. It's just out of, out of this world, really. That's the only way to describe it. One out of 10, what do you give it? I'd say a nine. I'd say nine's a good, yeah. good number. from Lee's Ferry, which is where we're gonna get out and pack up. So I think I'll end the video here. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then consider liking and subscribing. And this was sort of a different video than what I normally do. But if you wanna see more kayaking trips or just different videos in general, let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Hey everyone, hope you enjoyed watching that video as much as I did making it. The star of the show in this video was the Colorado River, so I wanted to take a moment to talk about the ongoing water crisis in the Southwest. We've all heard about the droughts in this part of the country for years, but the good news is that the Rocky Mountains have had a really high snowpack this year, and so that has really helped boost water availability across the Southwest. However, it doesn't matter how well the Colorado River is flowing whenever you don't have adequate plumbing to your home. And unfortunately, this is the reality for thousands of people living in the Navajo Nation, which includes basically the entire east side of the canyon that we were kayaking through. However, there are organizations working to fix that problem, and one of those organizations is Dig Deep. Dig Deep is a nonprofit working to bring water to those who need it most. According to their estimates, one in three families living in the Navajo Nation do not have running water into their home. Instead, they have to drive several miles to collect water and then ration every bit of it. Now, I'm not affiliated with Dig Deep in any sort of way. I've just recently been exposed to their work and I'm trying to spread the message. If you're interested in learning more, I'll leave a link down in the comments where you can read about the Navajo Water Project, as well as their various other projects bringing clean, running water to various communities across the nation. Access to clean water is a human right. So if you would like to help bring that right to the over 2 million Americans without running water, 
then please consider donating to Dig Deep. Even if you cannot donate right now, that's okay. Share this information with your family and friends and spread the word. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.